republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. It is a Tuesday morning, and we are back, and we are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho, and I honestly think I just screwed my intro up. I actually think I got a couple things backwards, but occasionally that happens because as much as the uh the listeners probably wouldn't agree uh, you wouldn't agree with me sometimes i'm actually thinking ahead when i do these podcasts and i'm actually thinking about what i'm going to say and thus i screw the intro up that i've been doing you know once a week for seven years well i guess once a week is de- debatable but uh, joining me today is uh we have a listener we have uh is it my do i call you mike or michael i got you in my phone as michael yeah, Michael works. Okay, it's Michael, and you're calling from Texas. Yep, and DFW area. Yeah, so we have been chatting for, gosh, how, but all summer, haven't we? Yeah, I think I texted you maybe in March or something like that. Yeah, so I know. Originally. I, and I always throw out there to, to, to all the listeners, right? I always give my free, I, I freely give my number out on this podcast I, I don't know how many other you know people you know podcast hosts do this but i freely give out my number and that is a it's not going to go to some helper it's not going to go to some assistant because yeah i can't afford one of those this is actually my number and you can call it and you can text me and and uh as michael can attest to i i will respond to it yeah that's true yeah i think you originally were um yeah, at the end of one of your podcasts, I was listening to you for a couple of months before that, and then you were like, "Does anyone have experience with the P three sixty five or the um, the macro?" And so I responded back. I was like, "My dad has a three sixty five. Um, shot that a couple hundred rounds. My friend has a X macro, and I've shot that as well. And they've seemed pretty durable. So, and then so we just kind of started from there, just kind of talking back and forth about guns and stuff like that." Yeah, and you know the reason why I was making a call out for that 365 is now everyone listening. If you if you know my wife, which you, you probably don't, now this is a this is a top secret Christmas. This is a top secret Christmas gift. So she's been wanting uh, to to get herself a, a firearm, new, another firearm. She shoots some crappy G43, and she's been wanting to get herself a newer firearm, a better one. And so she went and she handled a bunch of 365, and she really liked the macro because it's a larger gun, so it's going to be a little easier to shoot. It's got that longer grip. It's got a nice trigger on it, and so she's been looking at the X macro for quite a while. And you know, it's you know, it's a it's a decent purchase, and so you know you're. you're saving a little money here and a little money there and you know i'm we're to the stage of our lives we got you know we obviously have kids but i have grandkids now and you have lots of birthdays you have to worry about all kinds of stuff and so you know the little bit of money that we'd save here or there right it just gets used you know that the, it gets used somewhere else and so for christmas this year which is coming in just a few days i actually um went out and purchased her the x macro and it has the it i got the one with the red dot on it and i may change the red dot out i don't know we'll see i'm not too impressed it comes with the the sig romeo and but this one is actually the sig romeo pro so the reason why i bought the package with the red dot is because i I paid for the red dot a little bit but i figured eh, i could just toss it to the side and use that on on something else if i don't like it and get her something nicer but i you know i haven't shot this gun yet obviously it's not my gift i thought about it but it's not my gift to to shoot so i checked out the sig romeo pro and looked at it and just by looking at it it's it's built really really well and i guess the problems they were having with the other um uh, romeo red dots was the fact that they were they just weren't holding up they were breaking and so this looks like it's got a lot uh a beefier construction to it it's kind of boxed in so i don't know why we'll, we'll we'll see what happens so I'm, I'm hoping this is what she wants and this is not just her telling me that she wants a gun just to bring up conversation with her firearms instructor husband because you know that 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 could be that situation as well so i know uh uh you know i'll make a range report when she gets that and and when she shoots it so um what i thought we'd do today is we'll just start with a little more uh just odds and ends uh discussion and then we will get into the meat 
of the of the podcast. But uh, I always like to ask the guests when I do have them, which I used to have all the time. Uh, Michael, what did you do this week that was Second Amendment related? Um, done this week, Second Amendment related. Um, I'm actually doing it tomorrow, so I guess speaking in the future, if that counts. Um, I'm taking a, a friend out. He's a He's going to be a first-time gun buyer, um, so he's been saving. He has his eye on a uh, Walther PDP. Ooh, nice. Uh, so we uh, we went to a local range a couple months ago and was, you know, holding the Glocks and the SIGs and the uh, Walther. And the AK. I know. I was like, hold this Glock and just feel how gross it feels. <laughs> and, then, and I was like, and then look at the shadow system. It's more expensive. I can do all the grip work for you. And then way too much effort. And then I was like, hold this Walther, hold this HK. And he liked the PDP a lot. So, um, but so we're going to go. Um, and I just recently got a little bit of ammo. So just kind of helping him out. I'm like, Hey, you pay for your, uh, your range fee and your rental fee. And we'll rent some guns. I'll bring out my two guns and we'll just go shoot and kind of teach him a little bit. Let him try before you buy you know so that'd oh, be fun yeah and I, on all, all honesty i mean my that was kind of how i actually got started doing this right i started just taking friends shooting or people that were new to firearms or people that you know had some kind of you know uh, negativity or something against not liking firearms and that's how that's how i started this whole thing is just by taking them out so uh, that's I mean that that's good. That's that's fantastic. That's how we're going to carry on, right? That's how we're going to keep this this fight for the you know firearms freedom and the Second Amendment alive is by bringing new people into it to experience it. So uh, that's fantastic. And another thing you mentioned there that is just I've talked to a handful of people. I know if you've ever listened to the episode where I had Mo from Boston on here. Um, you got everyone talks about range fees. You got to pay for those range fees, man. That's a for right. that is a foreign idea to me. Like I can't even fathom having to pay to go shoot somewhere. That's just out of this world to me. Like I can't. There's just, I, and I'm not talking just because I have a range on my property. Because I mean, this is Idaho, and I could go to like I got like a dozen places I could go and shoot, right? So I don't even have a place where I have to pay to shoot. <laughs> so I can't I, I can't even I'm fathom so that. I'm so jealous of that. I mean, that'd be so nice. <laughs> yeah, I've been paying for. My dad was a member at the gun club. And he taught me when I was young, and then I always just paid range fees. So I found like different ranges I like. Some are really like really big ripoffs. They charge per hour. But now a couple other ones are like all day pass, which is way better. Yeah. It's like, you know, got the range officer, you know, I've never extended the hour, but I'm always thinking like, oh, I'm at like, you know, 50 minutes. I better hurry up, you know, or I, I don't want to pay for another hour, which is ridiculous. So, so what is it? Yeah. When, what is, if you go to pay for something like that, right? Well, I mean, what's a, what's a, what's an hour cost or what is an all day uh, fee cost versus, and I don't even know if it's possible, but versus like a membership where you just have a pass and you can come and go whenever. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, um, the pass is about like, or I guess the membership with uh, free range fees is like 30 bucks a month. And then, um, for like a range, at one range, it's like, I think 20 bucks for an hour. And then another range that's better, it's the same price, but they don't offer a time limit. So like you can go all day. Um, and then that the range that gives the all day pass, um, they actually have, if you're a member there, which is 30 a month, they have another side of the range that you can actually draw from the holster and they have like moving targets, which is pretty cool. Right. Um, I just don't go, I don't, I go like every two months or three months. So I'm like, if I paid per month, I would kind of be wasting money. Um, so I kind of just try and do dry fire and I'll go to the live range every couple months. So I haven't gone like 12 times in a year to where I'm like, Oh, I should get a membership. So, right. So what about, uh, you know, I mean, how much, I guess you want to make sure. So I'm a big advocate of when you go to the range and when you, uh, you know, you're gonna even you, when you're gonna buy the ammo and you're gonna go shoot and you're gonna go train, right? If it's not, you're not taking class, you're just on your own. I'm a big advocate of, you know, it's fun to do mag dumps, but you know, you should learn something with every round that you fire, right? So if you have an hour, if you have an hour that you've paid for and you don't want to go over that hour, like how many rounds, like do you plan on going through in that hour? Um, probably, I would say I do roughly, um, like 150 to, cause okay. after that, it's like a waste. Um, 
because I forgot to mention, um, kind of circle back. So there is another range. It's 45 minutes away, but it's called Extreme Tactics and Training System, ETTS. That's where, like, all the – they have, like, sniper classes, night vision classes. So that's $40. But the benefit of that is you get basically an outdoor range, an outdoor bay all to yourself. So you can move, you can shoot. I think I sent you a couple of videos of me at the range there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so when I go there, I'll, I'll, I'll bring like 400 rounds. But if I go to like a local range, I'm probably only doing 150, 200. And, um, and those indoor ranges, they're like, you can't shoot more than like three. You know, they want you to shoot like, some range officers are cool, you know, because I'm like, hey, I'm trying to shoot fast doubles, and they're okay with it, you know, but you're very limited. You can't draw from the holster. It's really just like a low ready aim and shoot. So, right. Um, Sounds like an NRA there's, there's, range. There's good <laughs> but that outdoor range is way more more fun so yeah it sounds like it sounds like an nra range uh, <laughs> what, so so when you when you go to shoot then i mean you're looking at like you know say i'm not counting fuel but like you pay for your hour and your ammo i mean that's like a that's like a hundred dollar hour yeah yeah it is yeah so each box of ammo is roughly 20 bucks or less depending on what time you get it so yeah it's about a hundred bucks in ammo and then yeah, about a hundred bucks, give or take. So, are there different rules and stuff like what kind of fight? Like as far as handguns, I don't know. You know what kind of firearms you can bring in there? Do they? Do they? I mean, like no steel ammo, or I mean, what do they? Do they check stuff? I mean, no reloads. Do you, do you know? Can you explain any of that? Yeah, they'll check your ammo. They like make you open the boxes. Some will run like magnets over it to make sure it's not like a magnetic core, I guess. Right. Um, so like steel casing stuff like that. Um, I think they don't let like bigger rifle rounds in. So like your 50 cals, but I mean, who really has a 50 caliber? Um, so, but I mean, honestly, if you shoot an AR inside the range, in you know, like an indoor range, it's kind of stupid. It's so right. loud. It's just yeah. obnoxious. And you only, only go 25 yards out. And most of the time they're like sitting on the rest. So I'm like, oh, geez. I'm like, you're just, that's just like if you're, you're sighting in your red dot or your scope or something. Yeah. I think, yeah. Some people, they shoot like one guy, he was like shooting like, I think 150 rounds or something like that. I'm like, you're just wasting your ammo, but whatever. <laughs> so I'm trying to think. I had a, I had another. Oh, so what's it like? I mean, are they pretty nice indoor ranges? I know I lived in Kansas for a while, and I never did go to any because I lived in a small town out in the middle of nowhere. But 60 miles away, if I were to drive into Wichita, they you know it's a bigger area. They had they had a handful of indoor ranges, and some were really nice, and some of them were just like I can't believe they haven't condemned this building yet. Uh, I mean, these. I mean, yeah. is it pretty? Are they pretty? Pretty nice ranges, or? Yeah, there's like three or four companies around, so some are really nice. Um, there's one company they recently just bought one, and it's like I'm kind of in a funny place, so like I'm like twenty ten minutes from like everything. So, but there's like some like ten minutes from the hood, and they literally bought out like an old Winchester gun range. Oh, okay, and like. We, we go to a Mexican mart up there to get meat and we see so many like just kind of sketchy looking people walking on the road homeless people and the gun range is like right there and I'm like so I tell my buddies I'm like if you want to get like you know real world practice you know go to that range because more than likely when you're coming out with your range bag you're going to get robbed you know <laughs> oh man that's, so that's that's not very nice but um, there's a couple other ones that uh, a couple of agencies and SWAT teams train out of mm-hmm. um, that's the one I like go to it's a uh, gritter sports um i think mike glover with fieldcraft survival he's done a couple training classes up there i think they actually did like a helicopter landing on top of their building like fast rope down for a swat team oh cool so that's more like speed higher end training they have a good like storefront with um like a lot of gun selection as well as uh like clothing hunting and stuff like that so that's like my my go-to and that's the one that doesn't charge them um, it's just like a day pass Right. The staff is really friendly, very um, informational. They all kind of looked apart, but a couple of the ranges, like you kind of walk in and they're just like, like look at like, oh, how dare you even walk in? Like they don't have really good customer service or anything like that. So it's like, yeah, I'll just come if y'all email me a good ammo deal. Otherwise, I'm not going to waste my time going in. You know, right? Some of, the, I mean, we have mostly when I say ranges around here, there is a couple of like, 
outdoor there well there's one we'll say one organized outdoor range and it's i haven't been out there for years it's kind of a pay to play so but you just go out there i think it's like five bucks in the envelope in the box <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. and it's kind of an on your honor type of situation. And I've heard some different stories out there, um, you know, stuff that's happened on that range, you know, unsafe stuff. Have you seen some crazy, have you seen some crazy stuff while you were in there shooting at the range? Like, like someone that just didn't know what they're doing. Someone being, you know, we see those videos about people just being stupid, unsafe. Maybe someone's, you know, launched a round through the ceiling. Have you, I mean, have you seen any of that? Thankfully, no, but um, I've talked to the staff and like, they're like i'm like what's like so one guy he loaded um he was shooting an ak a 762 um by 49 i think but he loaded a 556 round in there oh and like messed up his gun and then a couple other people shoot like the ceiling um i had one lady like um this was kind of like that she like walked in and then like an indoor range is not good for like new shooters just because some people (laughs) You know, she, so she started crying, and she ended up, like, walking out. And she didn't even, like, do her training session. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. Thankfully, I haven't seen anything unsafe. Um, seen some kind of goofy guys. You know, it's kind of like they're like, oh, you want to test drive my gun? Or, you know, they're kind of like sh- – some people are show off, you know. They got all their guns laid out. Oh, check this out. You know, so they're kind of trying to flex and show off, you know. Yeah. But. Have you had any tactical Timmies come up and tell you what you're doing wrong? Uh, thankfully, no. So, I, <laughs> my group's are pretty so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay, no, I'm just I'm just trying to get stories from the other from the other side, man. I don't know. I've never experienced that. I just don't know how that is going to. That's, yeah, well, that's I, wild. I, I honestly wish I could be like yours. You know, I texted you, made you a joke. Um, I was like, your your range is like um, getting like the honest outlaw. You know, with your Texas star and everything like that. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just. I wouldn't. The reason I don't go is because I you have to pay the fee and you have to drive somewhere. But I mean, if it was in my backyard, you know, and I reloaded like you, I probably for the first couple of years at least, you know, I would definitely just be shooting like all the time. So I just love it. It's so much fun. No, it is, and and I enjoy it too. And I this is what I tell everyone, and and people just shake their head. And I should do more, right? But it's just you know, I was years ago. Okay, years ago when I was just a little kid, I remember I went to church. And, and it, it, you know, the time I went to church, there was this guy that he would go to church there too. He was, and I love to hunt fish. I love the outdoors. My biggest dream in life was I wanted to be a fishing game warden, right? Wanted to be, if I wanted to be a fish cop. And um, this was back in Oregon. And this guy's, ironically enough, this guy's uh, name was Todd as well. Um, but uh, he, he pulled me aside one day and he was, I was talking to him. I just like adored this guy. Like he was gonna, he was like my hero, right? Um, cause he, uh-huh. he was living the life and he goes, Hey man, he goes, I love my job. Don't get me wrong. He's like, well, you just, you need to, I just want to tell you this. He goes, I love my job. I love being outside. I love doing what I do. He goes, and I also like to fish and hunt. And he goes, because I like to fish and hunt, this wasn't a very good job choice for me because yeah, I'm out among hunters. I'm out among people fishing and, and I'm outdoors and I, all that stuff. But I don't get ever. He goes. I don't hardly get a chance to hunt or fish myself because that's when I'm busy. <laughs> that's that's you know when people are out hunting and fishing, I have to work. So he's like, I very rarely get a chance to go out and do it myself. And I I tell people that too, right? It's yeah, I can I I instruct it. Yeah, I can shoot. Am, am I going to be a world champion? Probably not. But I mean, I can hold my own. I think I can do pretty good, right? I can instruct. You know, I can instruct really well. And, but people like you shoot, you shoot all the time, and I'm like, nah, I not near as much as what you'd think I do, because there's always something else to do. There's always a class to put together. There's always, you know, it's even simple, mundane tasks. There's, there's, there's cardboard backers to hang up. There's always tables to repair. There's always uprights to repair. There's a classroom to sweep. There's um, a curriculum to put together. There's computer work to do. There's a lawn to mow. There's, there's always always something and so people always tend to think that oh you shoot a lot you're an instructor you must i'm like i don't though (laughs) i don't the the only way to make myself shoot more is probably to like be going out and like creating like some kind of like video content and and honestly that's just really hard to do by myself yeah i can see that that makes sense yeah because i mean i'm looking at it like um i guess a fun hobby and I was like, oh, it'd be cool, like, if I do more competitions and get, like, sponsored or, you know, one of the, oh, sure. you know, higher 
posters or whatever. But then I'm like, then it would probably turn into a job, and then it wouldn't be as fun anymore. Well, it's so, not. Yeah. It's not that it's not fun. It's just that there's always right. something else to do because what people when the people oh yeah Patriot Defense like Patriot Defense is me like I'm, I'm essentially it man. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it all. I'm doing everything. I'm the guy that shovels the snow out of the range. I, I mean, I, I do it all. Every job, every mundane task that you might hire some part-time guy to do, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so it's just... So we kind of clicked because um, cause I'm also self-employed and I work by myself. I work in construction. I do all the stuff myself. So like I'm the marketing, I'm the customer service, I'm the, you know, the, the person who actually does the work and everything. Yeah. And yeah, it's a lot of work being self-employed for sure. So. Yeah. If you came home and your wife said, Hey, I want you to like, like build me this like China hutch insert. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but let's say China in the house. Right. You'd be like, oh, I'm so tired of this. I've done it all day. <laughs> oh yeah. I push out so much stuff. And then she's like, you know what? I'm just going to call somebody on craigslist and i hope he's a crackhead um that, that got done the next day i was like that's all you need to say you know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah anyhow that's just the wo i won't say the woes but that's just the challenges because it's a good challenge right i wouldn't have it any other way that's the challenge of 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 owning your own business and my goal every year is to get out and shoot more and to train some more and to do different things and every year i get a little bit a little bit better at it and my you know my son my youngest son he's 10 and we actually had a he's he's on christmas break right now and and since classes have kind of slowed down for me in the evenings for a few months i've um been taking him he does taekwondo twice a week so i've been taking oh. taking him and i just i don't drop him off i mean i take him there and i sit down and you know i talk to the other parents but i mostly just kind of like watch him right and the kid's picking up on it pretty well um and it's just it's you know it's just fun for him to 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 like get out and do something you know physical and, and active that kind of thing um so he's there doing that and he's learning and 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 so i watch him do these i don't even i don't even know what they i'm not a martial arts guy um like they like different do, like levels. you have to perform different i guess like forms they call forms like, oh, hey. You gotta do combinations and forms. Yeah, yeah forms and like well, one steps or whatever, right? And I'm watching him do this, and I was like, I keep trying to get the kid to like, he does really good at it. But I'm like, man, you should like practice at home. <laughs> like you would, I mean, he just, but he, he he just doesn't. He likes it, but he just doesn't practice at home. He he's the kind of kid that there's a time and place over here for that, and then when I'm at home, that's not the time and place for it. And as a dad, you want your kid to succeed and be the best they can. So I told him, I said, hey, buddy, I said, here's what we can do. I said, every, you know, a couple times a week or three times a week, I was like, let's, you do, I, I explained to him, like, hey, look, I can do dry fire stuff with my handgun and I can, I can practice my draw and I can practice the draw, you know, all that stuff, right? And I, I, mm -hmm. I said, that's kind of like a form, right? Like in martial arts to a certain extent, it's kind of like a form. And so I was like, "While well, you practice yours, I'll do I'll do that at the same time you're doing that, and then we can both practice together." So hopefully, I don't know. I want to get him out, just get him moving a little bit more, and kind of a little more focused on it. So maybe that'll help me do the same thing. I, <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure if it'll work, but we're we're gonna get as soon as uh, the new year starts, January first. That's kind of when we're gonna start this and try to create like a a, a habit to, to get out and do that with him. So he gets practice and then i get practice as well so that's awesome i think i mean you definitely as being like a father a good father and stuff like that you're leading by example and you know and not just saying oh you need to do this but do it you know together with him i think that's really cool like my daughter she'll like work out with me she's only six but she's like oh i want to work out again with you i'm like okay sounds good you know so it's just kind of fun but uh, what you said though i mean it's like he goes to taekwondo and he thinks like okay this is the only place i can do it but in reality you know he can do it wherever and that really ties into um the question that i kind of like asked you and you know and you're like that's a good podcast topic yeah so do you want yeah do you want to roll in let's let's just we're yeah let's just roll i told you we're, the intro was going to take four minutes two minutes or 37 so we're at 24 minutes now's a good time <laughs> okay cool. Well, I guess I, the question I was thinking, because I was listening to a couple of YouTube videos or watched a couple of YouTube videos and listened to some podcasts, and everyone was like, you know, because I'm always looking for a new gun. Like, I'm kind of like, I like handguns a lot. So I'm like, oh, this is a cool gun. You know, this is cool. But a lot of people are saying, you know, find something reliable and then stick with it 
and become proficient with it. So I kept hearing the word proficient, you know, and, but then that's all, that's where they just kind of left off. So my question for you is like, how do you define like being proficient with it? You know, like, is it like, you know, you got to, you know, draw under a second, get your shots off and look like John Wick out there, you know, or, you know, how do you, how would you define that? Just like the, you know, average, you know, American gun owner that carries and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I then it's a good question. I've actually since we we yeah, we probably been think, you know talked about this for the last week, week and a half or so, right? You mentioned it and I kind of been thinking on it and honestly, I don't I have I have I have an answer for you. And I'm not going to say say that it's a solid answer because I couldn't come up with one answer to rule them all, you know. Uh, did you see my Lord of the Rings reference there? One ring to rule yeah. them all. Yeah. So I couldn't. I couldn't come up with. I'm not even a Lord of the Rings guy. I just remember that phrase. So I just couldn't come up with just one answer that's going to cover everyone. Um, I think honestly, I think it's different for different people. And I see this because I have my my women's classes and my men's group classes, and that's where I see it the most, right? I mean, I do a lot of private classes and I do the permit classes, but I. Yeah, the people that I see consistently a couple times a month for 10 months, like I can, I can see and watch proficiency. Right. And I think it just depends. Like, why do you have a firearm? Right. Is it just to, is it, is it just because you enjoy shooting? Some people just purely just enjoy shooting, right? If they ever have to use it for self-defense, it's there, but when they go home, it's depending on their living situation. I think they should all be kept in safes, but some of them are just kept in safes. Uh, they're brought out when they want to go to the range, they shoot, they bring them home and by God, they probably clean them. Unlike me, they clean their guns and then they put them back in the safe again. Right. That's, that's the way they do it. So what is proficiency on that proficiency? I think would be uh, obviously, you know, knowing your basic safety, knowing your fundamentals. And if all you want to do is stand at a table and you want to put holes in the bullseyes, it's just perf being proficient with those fundamentals. It's perfecting those fundamentals because that's all you want to do for your, with your firearm, right? You then have the group of people that I'm not even talking self-defense. We're going to, uh, I mean, we'll come back to it, but you have the guys that, you know, you can call them thuds if they want, if you want. I mean, some people do. I think I have in the past. They don't, they don't do self-defense with firearms. They just have uh, uh, firearms because they like to hunt, right? So they're going to be proficient at using those firearms for hunting, not necessarily self-defense. So they need the fundamentals. They need the safety. Then you have, and it's, I'm, I'm going to be all over the board here, but then you have the person who, and I'm not picking on anyone because I've had lots of handicapped people to come and take my classes, right? They're handicapped or or they're older, let's say, right? Maybe they have a, they have trouble moving, um, they, they, and they'll tell you, Hey, we, I want this firearm for, for self-defense, but their idea of self-defense is a little bit different than the average Joe's, right? They may not go and are out in public as much. They may not be carrying the gun on their person. They may be confined to a wheelchair or their chair at their house. And they want to have a firearm next to them to be able to defend themselves from their chair, if that makes any sense. Right? So do they need to know how to, do they need to know how to shoot and move? Probably not. That's probably not part of the, uh, you know, regimen for them. That, that That's going to be out of bounds for them. Um, should they be able to shoot and be proficient with it? Yeah, I, I think so. It's profi There's that word again. Proficiency as far as like hitting what they're aiming at, you know, good trigger press, you know, fundamentals, that kind of thing. Yes. Should they be able to learn how to draw from a holster? Possibly. This is where we start getting possibly maybe do they have a holster attached to their chair i've seen people with holsters attached to their to their wheelchairs holsters attached to their walkers um mm -hmm. you know I, I i mean i've seen that right and and should you be able to draw and engage from that kind of situation yes you should but do you need to do the the, the fast moving stuff you know like that maybe not but then you have the guys so, who, who so, so, uh, go, go ahead sorry good job i was just saying you don't need to do CQB in a wheelchair, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You probably have multiple guns and a knife at that point. Just get stay away. Um, right. <laughs> so then you have, 
uh, you know, the I'm going to say the average person, right? Uh, probably the mainstream. They get a firearm for self-defense, right? Maybe they're going to carry it on their person, right? Their their proficiency, the type of proficiency they need is is going to change a bit, right? They need to be proficient at safety. Obviously, everyone does. They need to be proficient with the fundamentals. Now they can do what? They can move and shoot. They can learn to draw from a holster. They can learn multiple shot, target acquisition, you know, controlled pairs, double taps, whatever you want to call it, you know, changing target, target, target. They can learn that stuff. But I think as far as proficiency is concerned, it just, it really changes depending on who you are and how you're, I don't want to say how you're going to use your firearm, but how you, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, not going to use your firearm, but how you are forced to use your firearm, right? Because some people that can't move as much, they're more confined, you know, that kind of situation. Should everyone be able to know how to do a, a mag change? Yeah, maybe, right? I think the average Joe's going to carry a gun should know how to do a mag change, and they should know how to do those kinds of things. Um, but I think it's really tailored differently to different people, and that probably did not answer the question that you wanted me to, but that's kind of the way I see it. Well, you definitely opened it up for me because I'm thinking of it more like, I guess, just sample size of one because I'm not – I haven't trained as many people as you. I mean, I've taken like three buddies to a local range, like, um, or maybe four, but yeah, so not that much. So, and I kind of, you know, I have a, um, my sister-in-law's fiance, he's about to be a cop. So we do a lot of like cop training, you know, I watch like body cam footage and stuff like that. So I'm thinking more like, you know, trying to get him ready. So I'm tailoring training similar to that, I guess. So you you brought out a really broad point. So I guess <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> oh, but it makes sense though. So I guess um, would you? We I was thinking maybe since you said that we could possibly just like maybe talk about skills, and then the person who's listening just kind of needs to have like a realistic like okay where am I at, and what skills do I need to work on? I guess like I guess bringing this whole conversation up, I just want to one pick your brain on it because you have a lot more experience than I do with training and also like see what I can work on as well you know because I'm always trying to see what um what skills I want to work on and stuff like that because um that one friend that has the um, x macro that's his carry gun but he never carries it and I was like dude we've been out to that outdoor range we spent 40 bucks you know spent half a day out there you know 400 rounds a trip you know, I was like, you would feel real stupid if you got robbed at gunpoint and you didn't carry your gun on you. So maybe you should start doing that, you know, because he's put right. in the work, but he just doesn't carry, you know, he has all the paperwork and all that stuff. So, you know, I was just kind of thinking like, huh, how do you get more proficient, I guess, in, with, your, with your training and all that? So. Right. Okay. I want to, I want to, I want to preface something first because I, I don't want what I just said before when you first asked, I don't want it to come off sounding bad. I don't, I don't know, maybe in my brain it is, but what I want to say is I'm not saying that, 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 that someone can't learn all of that, if they're handicapped or not, because they certainly can. And if that's what you want to do, by all means, get your ammo, get your gun, go find an instructor, go to the range and, and learn how to do that stuff. You can do it. I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not closing the door, but some people, and this is just my experience. Some people just don't want that. Now, if you want to learn it, if, if, even if you're, if you're older or if you're in a, whatever it is, right, you can definitely by every means, all means go out and learn it and become super, super proficient. And I'm going when I say there's that word, but proficient in all those things or all the things that you can be proficient in by all means, go and do that. I'm not trying to limit someone right? Just because they're older or they're handicapped or whatever it might be. I just think sometimes people just aren't into it. So that might not be a proficiency that they need to learn, right? Um, now, when you when you talk about, you know, I want to get back to your buddy sometime too, because you said something that kind of, uh, you know, he, he, he goes out and shoots and does all the training, but he doesn't carry. Let's unpack that for a minute. <laughs> Is there, yeah, let's talk. is there a reason yeah. why he doesn't carry? I mean, did, did he tell you, I'm just lazy and I just don't, it just, it's uncomfortable. I don't want to put in the work or is there something else? No, he, he bought a holster. He carries appendix. Um, he says it's t-shirts. So he's also self-employed in a construction business. He has some dry fit t-shirts. So a little bit of the grip print. 
So I think he is kind of a little insecure whenever, um, you know, he's carrying because he's printing a little bit. So, you know, I was like, he tried like a little fanny pack carry for a little bit. Um, looks like a nerd. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I can say that I'm friend. Um, but yeah, so he's just like, he's kind of trying to figure it out. And I'm kind of like, you know, I'm like, just carry it around the house with you, you know, get used to it, get comfortable with it. It's not going to be overly comfortable, you know, but I mean, you just kind of have to eventually just, you know, eventually you're just going to carry it in public and not feel like everyone's looking at you and stuff like that you know what kind of so crazy do you guys have any crazy laws like no printing that kind of thing when you're carrying a gun concealed or are is there anything no, he needs to be concerned about yeah i know we have constitutional carry so you can carry however you see fit you can carry concealed as long as it's in a holster you don't even need to get your license to carry here in texas so and you says he um, carries appendix correct and so and he carries a, is that the x macro guy yeah, the X macro. So, so. What, what? How does it print then? I don't know. He has a tier one concealment. He, ha I think, he has like one of those core belts that um, ratchets. I think he just doesn't pull it in enough, or I'm not sure. He's like our body types are completely different. He's like six two, um, like little skinnier. I'm five eight, you know, two twenty, right. so a little more muscular, a little more like shape to me. So I can conceal my Glock 19, like, no problem, you know, even in just a T-shirt. And I'm like, and we're in the winter months now, so I'm like, you wear a hoodie, so you really have no excuse. Winter, it's like know. 70 degrees down there, and you're wearing a freaking hoodie. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, you're right. It's like 60 right now, you know, it's 40. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is it, uh, I wonder, you know, and I don't know if this would work on him either, but, like, you could t you could tell him, hey, look, like, if you're carrying center line, that's appendix, right? You're carrying center line, like one of the best reasons to carry it, well, a couple of the best reasons to carry it like that is it's less noticeable, right? Because, you know, people aren't looking at the silhouette of you necessarily, right? They're looking at you, you know, face on. So uh, it, it's going to print even less. And the fact that, you know, you can easily get to it quicker and you can protect that gun better. I think without seeing him, I, I would venture to say that it's in his head it probably shows a little bit but no one the average joe's not going to look at it and know what it is and if they do they're not going to say anything unless he's carrying somewhere that he's not supposed to i think he feels it there and so it feels different and he's like i don't know everyone can see it right because a lot of times i'll carry and i'll be man i know everyone can see it and my wife's like it, we no one can tell dude <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. in my brain, everyone's, everyone can see it, right? So I, that's what I think is going on. Now, would he be, is he open to, does he, does he know how to draw and shoot? Like, does he train? Does he practice that? Yeah, he did that um, local competition that I did. Okay. Um, he got seventh place and I got second. Just throwing that out there. I doubt he'll listen to this. If he does, I have to rub it in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll go to the range. We'll shoot steel. We'll do, um, like USPSA shooting drills, you know, all like the, you know, the draw from appendix and, you know, engage two targets and then do a reload and engage. And we have shot timers and all that. So he's very, I guess, proficient, you know, in air quotes. So he's not, he's very accurate too. So he's not like unsafe with it. Um, so he puts in the work, he's got his, um, you know, medical, we carry tourniquets as well. Um, chest deals, stuff like that, um, have a little bit of food store too. So we're both into preparedness and taking, you know, um, being our own first responders. Right. So, so it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a him being afraid to carry with a round chambered thing. No, it's not that. Okay. It's just, okay. It's not a habit. So, um, gotcha. But it's, I don't know. I'm just like, huh. Oh, I you just, know, like, you, I was I'm like, I would run to you know if you got robbed at you know god forbid he got robbed at gunpoint but you know and he doesn't he puts in all this training i was like you would feel really silly you know if you put in all this training and time and all this all the conversations we've had and then like it actually like you actually would need it to defend yourself and you don't have it you know just because you don't carry you right. know that'd be kind of crazy, so huh that's i mean that that's interesting so hopefully one day he changes his, i just was curious so uh just about it so it's let's get back to proficiency here so i we kind of ventured off and now we're going to venture back so steer me in the right direction so when you said proficiency guide me again what were your 
<laughs> what was your thought? I got I'm I got off on a rabbit trail. Oh, you're good. Yeah, I guess I mean, um, I guess my kind of journey was like I got the basic gross Glock 19. You know, was shooting at stock and then bought some aftermarket parts and that was fun because then I'm like, oh, I want to shoot it more. You know, so I slowly kind of got my grips a little tighter and then um, started doing like more, I guess, competition style training. You know just different drills and stuff and i've you know it's youtube's full of that so i've um so i guess i've just tried to grow and just try and be you know kind of test my skills in a sense like how tight can i get and how fast can i shoot you know round for round and stuff like that i still have a lot of improvement to go um so i guess like i don't know i'm always thinking like am i good enough you know i guess you can never right. fully answer it yeah i guess and, and that's like always get better you know never stop training never be yeah. satisfied also have a sense of confidence you know like i can pass this drill and i feel like i'm okay you know i guess that's what i'm trying to i don't know if that's making no sense. no it, make, it, make, it makes perfect sense and so that's uh i mean that's that that's kind of what i was thinking was you know proficiency like you know i think if you're if you're out there learning and you're and you're trying and you're training and you're doing drills and you're getting better every time you go or every few times you go and you and you can see improvements right um i think that once you're doing that i think you're i would call you proficient but that doesn't mean you stop right you keep looking for more and better proficiency and i tell i tell my students and i tell a lot of people when we're out here training it's like so you're you're working on maybe you're working i don't know you're working on some drill whatever it might be right you want to push yourself uh, you know the analogy push yourself get as close to the edge of the cliff as you can and and to the point of where oh i fall i fell off which means you've failed the drill or pulled a shot or whatever so what do you do when that happens you get back up you move uh, back away from the cliff just a little bit and you keep working and you push a little more and a little more and you'll get a little better a little faster a little quicker and then eventually you'll step off the cliff again, right? You'll fall off the cliff and then you jump back up and you keep doing that. That gives you a new threshold, right? You hit a new threshold, something to push. Maybe it's quicker on the draw. Maybe it's 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 some some timed drill that you found online or that you saw that you think measures a level of proficiency uh, that you can go out and you can and you can you know continue to practice until you you master all those, get faster, faster, faster. Maybe you've done all that, right? And 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 you're you're really proficient with that gun. Well, guess what? Go get a different gun. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's always something. Maybe maybe you're you're doing a hammer fired gun. Maybe you need to go to a, a to a, a a single double. Maybe you need to go to to a 1911. Maybe yeah, I can do this this and this. Why don't you pick up that revolver and see how you can do with the revolver, right? And just continue to get proficient and get better at every at everything you do. But I mean, you can always speed up your draw. You can always set up courses to challenge yourself. There's always something to do. One of the places that I've gone and uh, actually I probably need to go take more classes here one of these days, but you know, COVID came around and all that stuff, but um, and I just haven't done anything since really. But uh, one of the places I went and took what I call my continuing education credits, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I went and I think we can, I think everyone can get on there and see him. I, I believe, um, you can go on to go to TPC. It's called the tactical performance center. They're out of Utah, out of St. George area. You can actually go online, go to their website. And I could be totally mistaken. I can see him, but I've taken classes there. So I don't know if that gives me more of an in, but if you can go to their drill page, right, they actually have targets that you can print off and they have different levels of mastery and and they actually have these drills and it tells you exactly how to do the drills and exactly how to you know what you should be as far as what they deem proficient how fast what your score should be and then places like that are good places to go and get those and and they're free targets you can print off that you can print off the instructions and you constantly can go and find different drills to do right you can constantly refine in fact one of the best guys at doing this that i know is uh magnum or james he's on the podcast he helps me out a lot for my classes that guy is constantly refining his grip on firearms 
uh, when I yeah. when I went uh, to TPC and and learned a bunch of this cool stuff, right, and came with all this new knowledge, and he came and we he learned it, and he still uses a lot of it. But then he's he's I don't know what videos he watches. You know, he's going to text me and say, "You dummy, I've t- sent them all to you. You don't know." But he constantly <laughs> there's guys he follows on YouTube and and whatnot, and and he's always looking for suggestions, right? He's he's really good shot, really good shooter really good shooter but in his mind he's like i can always be more proficient and he does that by adding more tools to his toolbox and i'm not saying he just goes out and buys another gun when he does that too but he is constantly like oh there's just there's just later and greater you know this guy's talking about this newest grip right he re- this guy refined this grip a little bit so let me try it let me see how it stacks up against this other grip that i used to do okay well i need to i need to grip a little tighter i need to to lock my wrists out whatever it is and he goes okay well i found that that works good for this gun and this gun but not so good with my 45s i have to use a different grip but he goes i know this grip from the past todd taught this to me and it works really well and then this guy i've learned from him this grip what if i combine the two and then he'll take the good points or what he deems as good points from one and and then he's like it's like he's making a frankenstein right and he takes points from this other grip and puts them all together and he just he's constantly refining his stuff he's constantly trying to get uh that second third fourth round on target more accurate and quicker and i think that's that's how you become proficient you're always open to change you're always open to to improving and changing stuff up right that way it doesn't get stagnant yeah wow uh, we can end the podcast right now that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> but i mean and james, james is really good at doing that stuff no, I, I mean, that kind of answered my question since because I guess, like, I was thinking my progression kind of, you know, I bought my first handgun. I remember, like, writing down my social and doing the background check, and I'm like, this serial number is linked to me now, you know, and I'm like, that's right. a big responsibility. And then I went with my dad and, you know, shot, you know, 200 rounds through it or whatever. Nervous as can be. I went back the next week, was a little less nervous. You know, I've had some friends that are military and law enforcement. I'm not. So, you know, they're telling me all this and they have a little more confidence, you know, because they've been around it more. And so I've just slowly kind of like tried to like, you know, build more confidence with it and stuff. And now like, um, you know, got, had the Glock and then got a Canic, you know, did a little bit of competition, started realizing like now I shoot more. I'm not as nervous. I'm not as tense. Like I can actually like, I don't blink when like, you know, the gun goes off. I can actually see my sights the whole time. So I'm not flinching, you know, I'm getting more, I guess, comfortable. So I'm seeing myself progress, but I'm always wanting to get faster, Yeah. you know, and put myself. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's really cool. That's really cool about Magnum. And yeah, I hope the, you know, the listeners too think to, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, to take after, you know, always try and, you know, get, see what, get a good base point where you're at. The best thing to do is, in my opinion, is get a shot timer. Um, I I didn't want to spend a hundred bucks on a shot timer, so I'll I'll send you the app and you can put it on your Facebook if you want, um, Todd. But it's I think shoot on time. It's like a free app, and uh-huh. you basically just set the timer to go off. You can do it randomly. Like once you press start, it'll go off from like one to three seconds randomly, and then you once it beeps, you can have it from one second to like. 20 seconds so you can like set a course of fire you know it beeps you do your drill draw whatever and then the second beep that's like your par time and that's free and so i've like been you know practicing drawing from appendix you know dry firing you know and under a second and a half you know getting my sights on target yeah you know press the trigger and then i hear the second beep you know so that's been pretty cool and that's like free you know so you don't have to pay for a shot timer yeah, and I just went, and then that's a great idea. Yeah, send that to me, and I'll, I'll probably post it up. And it, it had me thinking about you know things like adjusting your grip, or things like dry firing, or things like just adjusting your stance a little bit, like how where you're holding your shoulder, you locking your shoulders out, are you rolling them down, are you opening up your chest, are you you know are you leaning in from your shins, right? What does your stance look like as far as is it an athletic stance, and where are your feet placed? Are they pointed in? Are they pointed out? I mean all this stuff like it's 
you can practice that stuff all the time. You can practice drawing that firearm, which is very important, and getting it up, getting getting your sights, and your you know grabbing your sight picture and taking that dry fire. All this stuff, right? That that uh, that a good portion of people do, but not enough people do. Why, why is that? Because it's not sexy, right? It's not high speed. It's not bang, 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 bang. Look at me. I can only learn when I'm firing rounds. It, that's yeah. that, that's how you improve is the stuff that's not sexy the important stuff the um that how i come up with a word a minute ago and uh i won't say the fundamentals because i mean those are important too but it's like the mechanics of it right that's mm-hmm. that is what is important maybe you're you know you're using your firearm and you're like man something's just not right like i'm doing okay maybe you need to put grip tape on it maybe you need to change the size of the grip because a lot of firearms you got like five zillion choices now right you can do stuff magnum will take his guns and his 1911s his expensive 1911s and he'll hit them with a freaking dremel tool until they work the way he wants them to and i'm not saying work is in function he does that too but i'm i'm saying like he draws it oh my thumb rubs wrong here i'm taking i'm getting rid of that i mean it, you know he'll he'll do all kinds of stuff right get down to the oh, wow. to the mechanics of it and the little things the little things make up that big picture and I think that's what's really important. But, uh, you know, it's it's more fun. I, you know, I, I use that word sexy, but it's more fun and exciting to do what? To go out and say you burn through 500 rounds. Can you learn something? Yeah, you can to a certain extent. But there's a lot more you could be learning if you focused on the mechanics, focused on the fundamentals, focused on the on the little things. You know, it's and and you mentioned it earlier. You know, you you had, you've invested in a firearm, right? Um, and and proficiency. You're gonna buy this gun. You want to be proficient. You want to get good at it. Um, you know what? They, you know, guns are expensive, and there's a lot of people that don't have a lot of firearms. It's like you know, I've got a handful of firearms. I use a lot for classes. A lot of people shoot a lot of my firearms, right? I usually am centered on one or two, and those are my carry guns, and those are the ones I practice with. And it's that old saying, you know, be aware of the man with one gun because he probably knows how to use it. You're right. <laughs> So, I you know, I think people need to put more money into training, more money into ammo, <laughs> more more time at home dry firing instead of running out and buying the latest and the greatest gun. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. I'm, well, not guilty of that because I don't have too much money. I have like a – I look at Staccato's, I'm like, oh, that's super nice. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm probably more realistically looking at like, a, you know, just another canic. <laughs> well <laughs> – yeah, I mean, and I, I and that's a fine choice, but I do the same thing. I mean, it's, you know, I've never really seen the need for one, but I thought it was cool because everyone's getting one. Wow, I should go buy a suppressor. But what is that really? What is, besides just being fun? And there's nothing wrong with that. What am I gaining from that? I yeah, mean, I mean, I, if it makes you train more, you know, spending that and it'll make you train more. Then maybe that's a win. You know, it's like you got something new and exciting you know but yeah but yeah i mean really, what do you need the suppressor for well we had the discussion we had the discussion <laughs> earlier this week though right i mean it's like let's buy ammo <laughs> you know let you know you yeah. bought you purchased some ammo i think ordered like three thousand rounds i'm just like let's just order i mean you know because that's going to allow me to shoot that's going to be helpful for, for my class and my students as well but that's going to allow me to shoot like there's a there's a a couple guns I wouldn't mind getting my hands on, but it's just like, why? I mean, should just train with the one I have. I've got a really nice gun that I've put some time behind, but it, you know, that P30 doesn't have as, I don't have as much time behind that P30 near what I have behind that VP9. And that's, yeah. and that's no one's fault, but mine. It's a, it's a really nice gun. It's, it's, I want to say it's tricked out. It kind of is, right? It's got all the stuff done. It's a $1,400 gun and I need to go put some time behind it. You know, I don't I have no excuses. I just need to get out and shoot it. And I think what's, that's what the average Joe needs to do. Like you're shooting your gun. You're like, eh, I'm like, I want to go get a new gun or I want to, you know, I'm not sure. I said, well, put some more time behind the gun that you have. Pay for a class, pay for ammo, you know, in my case, clean it. But <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it is what it, I, I, it is. What it uh, is. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, I just did a quick like calculation while we were talking. So, um, so if you save twenty dollars a week and you put that towards ammo and you bought it at like a local range or something, if you did that, if you bought fifty rounds a week for a whole year, that gets you twenty six hundred rounds. So I mean, you know, yeah. twenty bucks a week 
you know, for me, I go to a local gas station and I'll get like an energy drink and protein bar, Yeah, you know, and that's like seven bucks. So that's just one day, you know? So if I cut that out three times a, a week, you know, there's my 20 bucks for ammo, you know? So, um, if it's a priority, you can make it a priority, you know? Um, obviously I realize this is like my hobby and also like my passion. Like I played with airsoft guns as a little kid and it's just a real fun and happy place for me to go, you know, and do. Mm-hmm. Um, I always push all my friends to come do it too, but I know some people are just like, yeah, I'll get it, you know, throw it in safe, whatever, you know, hope I never have to use it, which is fine too, you know, but it's like, I guess you kind of have to have a realistic, um, be realistic about your skills. And if you're okay with where your skills are at, great. You know, if not, you know, I strongly suggest, you know, take more training, you know, and put in the time. Oh yeah. I mean, I a hundred percent, a hundred, hundred percent. I like that. You know, you like, I buy an energy drink and approach, you know what? I know people that drink four or five of those energy drinks a day. That's all. I don't, I, occasionally I'll go get a bucked up occasionally. Right. Usually it's on class day just cause my permit classes are long and you know, I just need a little something in the afternoon. Right. But I mean, that's you five of those a day. That's a lot of freaking money. Yeah, not to mention caffeine on your heart. Jeez, Louise. I know people <laughs> that drink a ton, man. I mean, you see, you see them in the mornings. I'll go in on the weekends. My wife works up at the local Valley White. It's a co-op farm store, but they have like a mini mart section, right? And you see those guys walking out of there, which is bags of energy drinks every day. And I'm like, first of all, how can you afford that? And how are you not dead? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's just kind of what I mean. I drink in the morning. I drink a, I drink a bunch of coffee in the morning, but it's on the way to run. So when I get there, I'm like running it all off, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean all that 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 caffeine and all that stuff. I mean, it, it gets used. Uh, some and of these coffee feel like energy drinks are like they're well, they up. got chemicals in them. <laughs> they're insane. Yeah. And like like the like the bucked up. I occasionally drink. <laughs> oh yeah, that would get you going. Yeah, but yeah, so, yeah, I just kind of think, you know, like I have a couple, another friend who, you know, works for Tesla and he is a USP and he's maybe shot, he got it, you know, back in April or something and he shot maybe 400 rounds through it and he's trying to get him to go to that outdoor range with me and get a holster and, you know, put training in and stuff. But he's just kind of, he's busy, which I get, you know, but I'm like, you know, you can, you should use that a little bit, you know, and let me shoot it too, because I don't have a USB and I want to shoot it. So, <laughs> well, you need to tell him he needs to go. He needs to go and uh, pick himself up a, a P30 from uh, uh, from Langdon. Yeah, I need to tell him. I'll call him right now after this and tell him. <laughs> There's this guy I was talking to on the phone. He's he's trying to get you to spend your money. Right. <laughs> so we need to meet somewhere. We'll have to go meet somewhere sometime. Like, like maybe I can find, I don't know how soon, probably not this summer, but one of these years we got, we got to find one of these days. We got to find like that. When I took that, that class, the last class I took was down in, it was in Arizona. So we might have to find somewhere and kind of meet somewhere. Maybe we can meet up for a class or something. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. And then also my sister, she's moving up to Northern Idaho. So, I'll definitely be up in your state, you know, and I keep telling my wife, she has a couple of friends in California. So I tell her about this crazy idea. I was like, we'll drive to Idaho and, uh, you know, I'll go hang out with Todd and we'll go shoot or whatever. And then we'll drive over to California and, you know, and then come back to Texas. So, <laughs> Oh, that's cool. That's a cool loop. So, Hey, so you you said you're in the, the, the DFW area. Yep. Dallas Fort Worth area. Yep. So where is, I'm trying to think, and I don't have the text in front of me right now and I'm not good at Texas. Okay. So don't laugh at me. My sister is going to be moving out to, um, around Houston. Is that like a long ways away? Yeah. Houston's about, I think 10 hours. From oh me. yeah. Okay. That's not going to work out well. <laughs> uh, you know. I don't ever visit her anyway, but I was like, maybe I'd be a good, <laughs> I, maybe I'd be a good twin brother and like go and visit her if she moves down there and, and drive over and see you, but nah, that's not going to work out. <laughs> I mean, truth be told, I probably wouldn't visit my sister either, but I mean, <laughs> if we can go shoot together. Then it'll be worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. You can take me to that range where I get a fear for my life. Yeah. There you go. So, well, hey, man, it was great. It was great having you on the show. I do appreciate it. We'll have to get you back on here again. I don't think you're going to have any problems with that. I don't think you'd argue with me on that as long as we don't interrupt your 
your workflow too much. Now, uh, that's the nice thing about being self-employed. You can schedule anything. You know, I have long lunch breaks where I got to go to the range sometimes, you know, tell clients, I got to go do a bid, you know. I got a meeting. Yeah, so, yeah I, got a, I got a meeting with, with uh, <clears throat> Mr. Glock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got to no, be. I, I got a meeting with Gaston Glock. I probably won't listen to it because I probably don't want to hear my voice. Um, but uh, so I'll probably. But yeah, I definitely. I really appreciate you letting me on, and I mean the content and everything's been awesome. I've been sharing it with my friends and everything. And are you they know, li- the Do stuff. they do they listen? Um, a couple <laughs> of them do. They're not really into podcasts like me. I right, care okay. a bunch. They kind of like yeah. And then I call them. I'm like, "Did you listen?" And I go, oh, "I haven't gotten to it yet." So I'm sure they'll listen to it now because I'm like, "Hey, I was on it." You yeah, know, well, might be. I appreciate you listening. I'm kind of sometimes it's like a shotgun effect, like on, on when I do these things. And it to, I need to be better. I used to be a lot better. I I need to get better. This is getting a little ridiculous. Like now, I was doing it every week, and then I wasn't, and then I was, and now it's like every two weeks. <laughs> sometimes you'll randomly get two in one week. <laughs> It's just, yeah. it's just, just one of those things. But hey, oh, oh, uh, I'm gonna th- before we wrap it up, I gotta throw out, I gotta take care of the the business part here. But uh, follow uh, Patriot Defense on all the social medias. You can find us on all the big ones. Um, share the uh, join, you know, join the social medias. If you're on Facebook, find us, like the page, uh, uh, TikTok, any of those things. Um, Instagram. Um, if you listen to podcasts, you obviously do. If you're listening to this, but share them with your family and friends. We always say this time of year here at the Patriot Defense Podcast. Give give the gift of the Patriot Defense Podcast. It's free. It doesn't cost you a thing. You're at your family member's house for Christmas, your buddy's house, pick up their phone, go to Spotify, subscribe for them. It's free, and it's the gift that you can give them, the gift that keeps on giving at least every few weeks. So uh, jump on there and do that. I do appreciate it. Give us a shout-out. If you want to get a hold of us, like Michael did, you can call me, you can text me, area code 620-794-6223. If you've got any questions, stories, you want to be on the podcast, you just want to say hi, you want to say, hey, this sucks, like quit doing this, like this is not good. Well, if you want to, I'll, I'll listen to you, but guess what? This is this is double your money back if you're dissatisfied with this podcast um, because there you go. I don't make a thing on it and I don't charge you anything for it. So, uh, listener, don't listen. It is what it is. But uh, thanks for being on, Michael. I surely appreciate it. And uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I've got another group coming in to do another podcast on this Friday. So uh, this might be one of those weeks where you get two. You got one for Christmas, one right now, and then one for Christmas travel. So talk to you all later. Bye.